a teenager today. Brother Nick, where are you? Would you stand up and let us sing happy birthday to you? Let's do it together, folks. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nick. Happy birthday to you. We'd like to do a song this morning as part of our worship. It's actually an older worship song, but I don't think we've really done it much here at the church. Maybe not at all. But, you know, the world today does not, as a whole, worship Jesus as Lord and Savior. The world today does much like the world did over 2,000 years ago when they spat upon him when they mocked him, when they made fun of him and made light of him. But whenever you see the trees bloom, whenever you see the flowers begin to grow, whenever you see the leaves of fall begin to change and you begin to see the snowflakes of winter fall, what that really is is the earth Proclaiming, proclaiming that Jesus, that Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. And there will come a day, come a day when every knee, every knee shall, bow, shall bow and every tongue, and every tongue shall, shall confess, confess that Jesus, that Jesus Christ, Christ is, is Lord. Lord. Worship with us Worship this morning in this song.
in our lives, corporately and individually. We're either coming into a storm, coming out of one, or maybe there's one raging in the moment. Help us, O oh God, while the waves crash and the winds blow, to keep our eyes upon you. Because you are the author and you are the finisher of our faith. You can do, Lord, through us your mighty works as long as we surrender to your will and be still and we will know that you are God. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. You can be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Sometimes uh, as we go through life and, and we may go through some trials or some storms, but sometimes we forget all the blessings that God gives us. This song here says, I'm a child of the king. And if you're one, uh, if, if you know that your sins are forgiven, you're a child of God. You are a child of the king. And, and think of the king. We are a child of the king. Amen. This song says, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the king. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I who was wretched and poor now can sing, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the king.
from my table. All right, so uh, first things first, uh, children, you are dismissed to go down to Children's Church. Let them head on down to do that before we start our beautiful little sermon. All right. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. That's awesome. So the title of my sermon is called The Time Is Now. And the reason it's called that is because it's in conjunction with what we've been talking about on Wednesday nights. So on Wednesday nights, we've been going over the topic of redemption this aspect of coming back to God. Now, the first couple weeks we were talking about um, basically week one was not mocking God. And we went over the story of the um, two criminals that were hanging on the cross with Jesus. And how one accepted him and is in heaven with him, and the other mocked him and is not in heaven with him. Then the next week we talked about, um, ooh, sorry, the next week we talked about um, basically Paul and how he was in such opposition to God and yet God still used him and brought him back to God. Then last week we talked about Jonah and running from what God has to do for you. And today, it's going to tie them both into each other and bring it in, which brings me back to my title, The Time Is Now. So, first things first, those of you in the congregation, how many of you are like me and are major procrastinators? Like, I will put things off until the last minute before I even get in trouble. Anybody, anybody like that with me? Yeah, I'm seeing a couple hands. Yeah. So, I don't know about you guys, but in my mind, I think I have a lot of time. I can do that later. You know, whether it be chores, laundry, housework, homework, stuff like that. I'm just thinking, eh, I'm really not feeling like it. So, eh, maybe one more episode. Maybe I'll take a shower. Maybe I'll eat something. I'll do it later. I've actually got a really good story with this. Um, so I've got a really good friend who uh, went to college with, and every assignment this man turned in, he turned in at the last minute. There would be days where he would, they would give us assignments months in advance, and yet he would still the night before be doing that assignment because he put it off so much. Um, I remember one night specifically, it was... The week before finals, we had this big paper that we had due. So I'm going, I'm finishing up the last piece of my paper. And I think it was like, supposed to be like a 12, 13 page paper or something like that. Something very ridiculous. And I walk up to him, I'm like, hey, have you started on this yet? He's like, no, I think I'm just gonna pull an all nighter. Maybe I'll start here in about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll see how it goes from there. This man chose to do an all-nighter, spend the entire night drinking coffee, drinking energy drinks, um, listening to loud music, just to stay awake to do this assignment that he could have done before, that he could have done earlier. There are things in our lives that we can put off, things that we can procrastinate, things that we can lay up to the last minute. Some of us, that can be homework, um, those of you in middle school, high school, and stuff like that, you can put off getting married and stuff like that. You know, I'm 20, uh, four, right? Yeah, 20, I'm 24. I can put off getting married for a while. That's something I can put off. Um, I can put off, you know, starting dinner because it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. I can put some of this stuff off, but there are things that we can't put off, you know, like our taxes. Can't put that off, otherwise we'll get arrested. You can't put off taking care of somebody. And you can't procrastinate a relationship with Jesus. And the reason for that is what we'll be talking about today. Do not put off a chance at salvation. 
until later. Because, for one thing, later may not come. This is in Matthew 24, 36. But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Now, the context for this is Jesus is talking with his disciples about the end times. Whenever they didn't know it, but whenever he comes back after being raised from the dead. You know, he's talking about that. He's talking about the end times. And whenever all will pass away and all will fade away. When there's no more time left. When the hourglass is spent. Whew. I would even go as far as saying, we don't even know when we will pass. Because there have been so many times in my life where there have been people and pets in my life that have passed without me knowing. And if I would have known, I would have gone back and spent more time with them. Kind of thing. Um, I want you guys to look at this. Look, or not look at it because I don't have a slide for you. But just listen to this. Jesus says, not a man knows, or a woman, when that time will come. Nobody knows. So that, what that means is that you can't be prepared the end times truly because you don't know when that time will come because when you plan something you have a date set and then you can work towards it like a goal but with that you don't know we don't know if it'll happen today or if it'll happen a thousand years from now we don't know and I want you guys to look at that second piece not even the angels of heaven nor the sun what Jesus is saying there is that even he does not know when the end times come but just the Father. Only the Father knows when that time will come. Only the Father knows whenever you will return back to his kingdom. Only he knows that, and that is because he is outside time. Now, you might be thinking, why are you bringing this up? Why are you talking about all this stuff? It's because we can't afford to put it off. We don't have the luxury of having a date set and getting ready and prepared for it. We don't have the luxury to put this off. If you feel a call on God, of God in your life to come and have a relationship with him and to live with him in eternity, take it. Because we don't have the luxury of putting it off until later. This should, be, this should put a, bit, a sense of urgency in you. Because, because of what I've just said. Because we don't know when this time is coming. So why not get it done as soon as possible? And that's just how I like to live my life, is I like to get things done as soon as possible. Unless I'm procrastinating them, then I'll put them on later as possible. But here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't want, at the end of your life, let's say you keep putting it off. Let's say, uh, I'm not feeling it this week. I'm going to go. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. And then you keep doing that. Next week, next month, next year. Oh, next time. What will eventually happen is you'll come to a point to where you're at a wall. You have no more time left. And then you're going to look back and think, look at all this time I wasted. Look at all this opportunity that I wasted. Where has all my time gone? It feels just like yesterday that I had that first call in my life. Where has all that time gone? An illustration for this that I can use is um, when I was in college, I didn't get out much. I stayed in my room a lot. But when I did get go out, um, it was usually with a group of people. But there was one rare occasion where um, I was meeting a girl for lunch and oh, it wasn't lunch, it was dinner. Sorry about that. And we had set the date. We're like, all right, we'll go out on this day and we'll um, meet at this place. So I'm sitting in my room that morning. I'm like, all right, I don't have to get ready until 3.30, so I think I'm going to do a little bit of homework, maybe watch some videos, maybe, I don't know, maybe read a little bit. So I'm procrastinating, getting ready and stuff like that. I'm doing my own thing, 
and then 3.30 rolls around. I'm like, uh, but I, I just, it's a cliffhanger, and I want to keep going, so maybe, maybe 15 more minutes. 3.45 rolls around. Then 4 o'clock. Now it's 4.15. I'm 15 minutes late, and I need to be there. I hadn't even showered yet, so I pop in the shower real quick, pop out, and I go. I'm hitting 80 on an interstate, um, going buzzing down. And I get there, and she's the only one in the restaurant besides the wait staff. And she's sitting there. I run over, I sit down, I apologize for being late, um, and stuff like that, and I start spewing out excuses, and she's just like, stop. Here's the thing. We had this set, we had this planned. And the thing that stuck in my mind the most was the next piece that she said. She said, this isn't going to work because if you really cared about me, you wouldn't have put this off. You wouldn't have procrastinated. You would have come on time. And then she gets up and leaves. And uh, lo and behold, that night I had McDonald's for dinner because I was too embarrassed. Now this relates to our relationship with Christ. If you keep putting it off, not only will you lose time, you'll lose opportunities. Because if you are sitting here, and I'm not admonishing anybody who's not a Christian, because we all started somewhere. If you're sitting here and you've already felt the call of God on your life, and you keep putting it off, let's say you put it off. You say, nah, I'm going to keep living my way. Then the next people then the people you meet and the people you interact with, the people that you could witness to, tell about Jesus, you could show love to, show how he wants you to live. All the people that you meet and you could have that, those opportunities with between then and the next call, that's all wasted opportunities to bring people to Christ. Because that's, that's our goal here on earth is to bring people back to God so that they can have eternity with him. And if you put off your salvation, you put off the opportunity to speak to other people, then you're basically taking the opportunity away from someone else as well. Think about that. I also want you to think about what I said earlier. If you keep putting it off, there will eventually become a time where it's too late. Now, I'm not saying that God has limitations like that. I'm saying that there will be a time where maybe you don't have the opportunity to. Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, huh, maybe I'm going to die. I don't know and then you just pass on. Or maybe it's just gone like that. And you're thinking to yourself, while you're in wherever you go, you're like, why did I put this off? Now, now that I've started with the doom and gloom, let's move over to some positive stuff, all right? Because I don't, I don't like leaving stuff down at the dumps on the negativity. I like bringing it up, bringing it out, making it happy. So. The second piece we're going to look at comes in 2 Corinthians 6.2. Fun fact, written by Paul. For he says, at the acceptable time, I listened to you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Paul is writing here that now is the time of salvation. Now is the opportunity to repent. Now is the time to come back to him and have a life full of God. Can I get an amen with that? He's not saying that, oh, you missed your chance. That was a week ago. He's also saying, not saying that your opportunity is 10 years from now when you're sitting on your front porch drinking a sweet tea. No. He's saying the time is now. Now is the time of salvation. 
If you don't have a, already have a relationship with God, now is the time. Now is the time to come to him and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I accept you. Lord, I love you. Now is the time that if you have unconfessed sin in your life, to say, Lord, I give this to you. Please forgive me and let make me whole again. Now is the time. His arms are open wide and ready for you. He's standing there like, come on, I'm waiting for you. Come on, come to me. Let's do this. Come on. Doesn't matter what your sins are. Doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter if you're a Saul. Be Christian persecutor. It doesn't matter if you're Jonah. The man who literally, God said, go this way, and decided, mm, I don't like these people. I'm going this way. It doesn't matter if you're that criminal on the cross that's hanging there because you did something wrong. You broke a law. You've done some things you shouldn't have done. You have unconfessed sin. Now is the time to repent, to turn away, to come back to God. Now is the time. And one thing that this says, they have to do a little bit more. Because what he's saying is, now's the time, and it'll be given to you. If you say to God right now, Lord, please forgive me for my adultery. Forgive me for my drunkenness. Forgive me for my slander. Forgive me for the harm I've done to others. Forgive me for the harm I've done to myself. Forgive me for cursing you. If you truly believe God, and if you are truly in one with God, if you are truly in a relationship with Christ, it will be given to you. One of my favorite songs is called, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. And I'm blowing my phone up so I can look up some of the lyrics. Um, and by the title of this song, you can probably guess what it's about. You're right, it's about partying. Just kidding, it's about worshiping. It's all about worshiping and giving your life to Christ. Now, worshiping him. Let me just read couple of lines from the song. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day, every tongue will confess you are God. One day, every knee will bow. Still, the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. How awesome does that sound? This song is really the embodiment of 2 Corinthians 6 2. Come, because now is the time to worship. Now is the time to sing praises to God. Now is the time to worship God. Now is the time to give your heart to Christ. Now is the time to recognize that God came down in flesh as Jesus performed miracles, spread the gospel, and died on a cross for you, only to be lifted up three days later, and he will come again. Come just as you are to worship. Doesn't matter what you look like, how you talk, how you look, um, how you act. Just as you are. Before your God. Don't put off an opportunity at being one with God. Don't put off an opportunity to live life with God. Don't put off the opportunity to be loved like you've never been loved before. Don't put off the greatest decision you could ever make just to have fun now. Allow God, allow Jesus, the Holy Spirit, be your savior now.
because all he wants is to spend eternity with you. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord Jesus, I am all in for you. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, what I want you to do is if you've never accepted God in your life, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, if you've never done that before, you can do it in your heart, in your soul, out loud, but I just want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for coming to earth and dying so that I may have eternal life. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you came, you died, you rose, and you will come again. I accept you as my Lord, as my God, and I am asking you to come into my heart and rule over my life. I love you, and I thank you. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen. Now, if you could put your eyes back on me, raise your heads, open your eyes. Um, as Pastor Joe plays some, basically, so, not really solemn, but just some mood-appropriate music, um, I'm going to open up the altars. If you would like to pray to God alone, we have these altars over here. Um, nobody will come up. Nobody will bother you. If you would like to pray with somebody, then you can come over to these altars. Or if you don't feel comfortable coming in front of everybody, you can stay at your seat and you can pray there. We're just going to take this time to basically go through our minds and just have some time with God whether you're asking him to be your savior for the first time, whether you're asking him to be your savior for the 10th time, or if you're just asking for forgiveness for whatever you've done, or if you're just wanting to thank him for what he's done for you, this is your time to do that. For the next couple minutes, the altars are open, your seats are open, and this time is just for you guys.